friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl with me, Annalise. Today we'll be talking about snake spit, and Tatuba here has nothing to do with this. She's just here because she's pretty and we wanted to show her off, so she'll be hanging out with us today. I love learning all I can about snakes and how they have evolved. I think that delving into the evolution of snake loogies is a pretty cool idea, don't you? I have made a loogie and now smashed it. I'm referring to snake venom, of course, and there's a lot of interesting things to learn about venom. What's in it, how it works, how it's delivered, and how it can save countless lives. Let's get to it! Before I get into it, I want to get something out of the way. Many people will often refer to snakes as poisonous when they actually mean venomous. Poisonous and venomous are not interchangeable terms. Poison needs to be ingested to harm you. Venom has to be injected. There are very few poisonous snakes, those that can hurt you if you eat them, but there are many venomous snakes that can harm you if they bite you. How snake venom evolved is very complicated and some of it is still being debated. It's very sciencey and way above my pay grade. Really buddy? Hi! As you can see, we have a very special guest. He is one of our honorary reptiles, Oscar. I don't know how long he's going to be with us for this scene, but we'll see. So, this probably makes way more sense to my brainy sister, who is working hard on her PhD in animal and avian sciences. So, I'll keep it to the basics. Venom is an evolved form of saliva and is produced in modified salivary glands. It is thought that it might have originally evolved as a way to speed up the digestion process of the snake's prey. Killing what was bitten was more of a side effect to the pre-digestion that made it easier for ancestral snakes to catch and eat their prey. The faster it worked, the safer it was for the snake and the more they got to eat. So the evolutionary process favored more and more potent spit and better ways that it got delivered. Many scientists think that the evolution of venom and the change from mechanical ways to subdue prey, like what tubs would use here to constrict, to biochemical ways was what allowed snakes to expand across the entire globe. Snake venom is very complex. Toxic proteins are the cause of most of the harmful effects. There are also enzymes which speed up the reactions that break down the chemical bonds which destroy the prey's tissue. Depending on the type of venom, these enzymes can also lower blood pressure, destroy red blood cells, and inhibit muscle control. There are three main types of snake venoms. Cytotoxins, neurotoxins, and hematoxins. But there are a lot of variations in makeup and potency, even among similar snake species. Many snakes even mix and match different types of venom. You know, just to keep things interesting. Why not? Cytotoxins are basically digestive juices that dissolve tissue and muscle and even bone, and can eventually cause hemorrhaging and, of course, death. Some tissue may even experience something called liquefactive necrosis. Don't Google that. It means that the dead tissue gets partially or completely liquefied. King cobra venom is largely cytotoxic, as is gaboon vipers and puff adders. Neurotoxic venom attacks the nerves. It blocks electrical signals from nerve cells reaching the muscles and can lead to paralysis and eventual suffocation and death. The venom itself doesn't kill you, it just prevents your muscles from working. You know, the muscles that you might need to pump blood, to breathe, maybe even run to get help. No big deal. Many elapids, like coral snakes and sea snakes, often use this type of venom. I know I said a minute ago that king cobra venom is largely cytotoxic. Well, it's also got a lot of neurotoxins in there too. Remember the mix and match thing to keep things interesting? There you go. 
Hematoxins attack the blood, either by rupturing red blood cells and causing massive internal bleeding and death. The doctor said all my bleeding was internal. That's where the blood's supposed to be. Or ramping up blood clotting, which can cause blockages leading to strokes and, you guessed it, death. Either way, you're not having a very good time. Most rattlesnakes rely on this type of venom. They also use the distinctive scent of blood being broken down to track down their bitten prey so they can safely eat it after it has succumbed to the venom. It's a pretty good strategy. A quick bite, release, then sit back and let the venom do the work knowing you can track it down later. Not bad, eh? It's kind of like when my mom makes bacon and I just follow my nose into the kitchen. Scientists think that snake venom evolved independently in multiple ancient families of snakes. This could be why snakes evolved different ways of delivering their deadly goobers. Vipers, for example, evolved hollow hinged fangs that flip forwards when they strike. This type of fang is called solenoglyphus. They are the most sophisticated type of fang and can quickly deliver a huge volume of venom deep into the tissue of their prey. Being able to tuck them away with the hinge means that they can grow huge and still be able to close their mouths. The Gaboon Viper from Central Africa, for example, has the world's largest fangs that can grow to two inches long. If you're thinking two inches that that doesn't sound like much, that's also about how long a grizzly bear's canine is. Elapids, like cobras and coral snakes, have fixed fangs. These are called proteroglyphus. Because they are immovable and cannot be tucked away, they only get about a third as long as a viper's. They compensate by either hanging on and chewing in the venom, or having enormous powerful glands that can deliver a buttload of venom at a time. Some, like the spitting cobra, have figured out that the high pressure stream doesn't necessarily have to be injected and they can just squirt it at you from over six feet away like the world's worst super soaker imaginable. Fun! Seriously, this hardly seems like a fair fight. venomous snakes use a more subtle and understated fang. Yep, my venomous snakes. I actually have nine venomous snakes from three species in my collection. Someone my age keeping and handling a venomous snake? Crazy, right? Let me show some to you. No gloves, no protective gear. I'm just gonna reach in and grab them. That's just how I roll. Here is Jim, Dwight, and Richmond. You might think that these venomous snakes look an awful lot like harmless garter snakes that you would find all over North America. And you'd be right. You would be completely right. Jim is a coast garter snake, Dwight is a valley garter snake, and Richmond is a plains garter snake. While garter snakes are technically venomous, they are absolutely harmless to humans. Their venom is extremely mild, may be powerful enough to sedate a toad, and has no real effect on us. Garter snakes are part of the largest family of snakes, colubrids. There aren't many venomous colubrid species, but those that are are rear fanged or opisthoglyphus. With no large dedicated venom glands, they deliver their venom using a grooved fang at the back of their mouth. They kind of have to chew their venomous saliva into you for a while for it to start working. Instead of injecting their venom, oh my goodness, you're so cute. Instead of injecting their venom, they kind of have to let it ooze into the bite. These guys would basically have to be trying to eat me to deliver any venom, which, as I said earlier, is absolutely harmless to humans. That's not to say that there aren't more dangerous rear fanged venomous colubrids out there. 
The hognose snake is an adorable and popular pet snake, whose venom is about as potent as a bee sting. The flying snake from Southeast Asia has a fairly powerful venom, and of course, there's the deadly boom slime. An arboreal snake from Africa that has what I think is the coolest name ever. Boom slime! The rarest type of fang is called Atractus pis. These are used by many species of burrowing snakes. There's obviously not a lot of room to open wide and underground burrows where they hunt, so they employ an interesting strategy to subdue their subterranean prey. Their fangs are exceptionally long and extend from the front of their mouths backwards and downwards, poking out of the sides of their closed mouths. What they do is they slide up next to their prey and slash down or sideways to stab their fangs into their meal. The stiletto snake actually takes this a step further and uses a spring-loaded fang in an extremely flexible socket-like joint that allows them to bite their prey in a huge range of angles without even opening up their mouth. So I think we've established that snake venom is pretty scary stuff, right? Well, as deadly as it is, it can also be used to save lives. Many of you may be aware that snake venom is actually used to make snake antivenom. This is critical medication used to treat victims of snake bites. Did you know there are between 80,000 and 100,000 deaths due to snake bites every year? I'll be honest, while researching this, that number shocked me. I had no idea it was that high. Most of these deaths are in developing countries without access to reliable healthcare and, by extension, anti-venom. Last year, the World Health Organization released a $136 million plan to cut that number in half by 2030. The plan focuses on educating communities on how to prevent snake bites and provide a more widespread anti-venom to these impoverished communities that have been unable to receive proper care. Anti-venom is not the only medication produced by snake venom. Scientists have already created life-saving drugs that lower blood pressure, others that can dissolve blood clots, preventing heart attacks and strokes, medications used in pre-surgery to reduce complications, pain relief medication, drugs that treat diabetes, autoimmune disease, even cancer. Countless lives have been saved by the venom of these incredible creatures. With ongoing research into the properties of snake venom, countless more in the future. Isn't that amazing? Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching me, the All Canadian Reptile Girl, and Jim, Dwight, Richmond, and Tatuba. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about snake venom. I know I learned a bunch in researching this fascinating topic. My hope is that people who fear snakes will understand them more and fear them less. Please don't forget to check out my other videos and my Instagram. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. The button is, uh, I don't know, right there-ish. And remember, nurture all nature. See you next time. Bye. Many species of venomous snakes that if you, if you get, okay, that just went carefully. I think that delving into sn the evolu- mm. That was sad. <laughs> I don't feel like I should be smiling when I'm talking about how people can die. Do I need to be Rosa talking about- Well, I found the body dismembered and his fingerprints all- Do I have to be like that? You suffocate to death in the most uncomfortable way ever. Happy? <laughs> to the biochemical ways was what allowed. <laughs> Sorry to do what I'm saying, but that's the right was what allowed snakes to expand across the entire globe. I'm sorry, did I stop? Maybe I took a boy Oscar.
Yeah.